In a recent interview, Emeki K accused his ex-wife of closing down his 480 million naira school, attempting to kill him, divorcing him for things he did not do, and hindering him access to his children after the divorce. However, his ex-wife and his eldest son have finally come out to share what they passed through in his hands and why denying all his claims starting with the first allegation, the 480 million naira school. This started in 2007 when Emeki K decided to invest his money in other businesses after noticing that Nollywood was crumbling. Since his wife is a teacher, they both decided to establish a secondary school named St. Nicholas. At this time, he doesn't have enough money to start building a school and running the school, so he decided to rent a building while using the little money he had at the time to buy school equipment and pay staff. After searching for a place with a good location, they eventually got a twin duplex in Magodo and decided to go for it. When Emeki K and his wife went to meet the landlord, the 87 year old retiree landlord Chief Samuel Agbola did not know who Emeki K was, but his children came out saying they knew Emeki K, the famous actor, and he was a nice gentleman. That was how the landlord accepted them and they explained their plans to the landlord. We had leased the building for 10 years because it wasn't really completed and we we're going to complete it and you know do other things and then make it suitable for a school and all that. But we didn't even complete the, the, the building, you understand. So, the, you know, we wouldn't have spent about 30 million, 20 million, you know, but for publicity's sake, you know, at first he was claiming it was 100 million and now I don't know where 480 million is, is coming from. To start with, they had to pay the rent of 2 million naira per annum for the first two years and 3 million naira annually for the remaining three years, bringing the total rent for five years to 13 million naira. But Emekike was able to get the landlord to accept a deposit of 2 million naira with a promise to pay the rest later. Trouble, however, started when a year after starting the school, the actor began to default payment because he was broke. Actually, Emeki K began struggling financially when he started doing drugs, which also led him to start selling his properties to keep up. What kinds of drugs? Meds, whatever. They said they found his paraphernalia, you know. And that made me realize why. Why money would finish. Why we would plan and say, okay, this money is coming in. We need to do this. We're going to do this. And all of a sudden, money is gone. I have heard has been selling off his properties. Mm. You know, we couldn't even finish our our buildings and all that because of his drug use. However, at some point, Emeki can manage to pay the school landlord only the sum of 1.5 million naira to buy more time. This got the landlord angry and to force Emeki K to pay the remaining 8.5 million naira and eject him from the property, Chief Samuel had to drag Emeki K to the Ikeja Magistrate Court which included no payment of salaries for six months, employing unqualified teachers to cut costs, increasing the students' tuition fees and not repairing part of the school, which was spoiling. In the middle of this financial chaos, Emeki K got a job in America to shoot a movie where he stayed for two weeks. Within that period, his wife and children were kicked out of their residential building by their landlord, Dr. Fasholue, because they were unable to pay their 3.5 million naira rent. At that time, we didn't have money. Okay. The landlord had kicked us out of the house. The time we were given had come to an end. So we decided to move some things to the school compound because we still had space, you know, we we're still building, it was not filled with children and all that, so we had space. So I moved some things into, that, uh, into the school compound and I was living with his mom. I was sleeping on the floor with my kids in his mom's small apartment. Within that same two weeks, the school landlord got a court order to carry out an emergency execution of the judgment based on a Mekki case refusal to obey court orders to vacate from the school building. The landlord with police officers and some hefty men landed at the school premises that fed today. A Mekki case wife being the one present had to ring the bell to inform the students and employees that the school was closing down, which was something Emeki K would have done 
if he had been present in the school. Eventually, the school was shut down with some of his properties thrown out of the premises. The landlord also stationed some guards at the school entrance to avoid trespassing. When Emeki K returned from America, he was said to have gone to Magodo police station and reported that assassins invaded his properties and wanted to kill him. Gunmen were coming to my house, masked men, go to Magodo, Magodo police post. You see my statements. After this, the police arrested the two guards the landlord had stationed there. When the landlord heard about the arrest and went to Magodo police station, he spoke to the DPO and turned that document from the court. The police officer said, so Emeka came here to tell us lies. Why this was happening? His wife left Emeki K's mom's place and decided to finally end the marriage when Emeki K's mother was making her life a living hell. His mom jacked my mom's clothes and was shouting and saying my mom has stolen her son's money again. My mom should give her her money. She needs her money. She wants to do things. She don't, can't do anything. And my mom is here stealing her son's money. And she tore my mom's clothes and my mom was naked. And my mom was like, can you find your son's money on me? My mom emptied her bags and everything and, you know, trying to say that I don't have any money on me. Which money have I stolen? You understand? And I got upset and I told her, Mommy, I am tired. I am tired. You can have your son back. And I picked my kids and I left. Then at that time, he was my first everything, first boyfriend. I just came out of secondary school. Mm. I just came out of not knowing, you know, anything. I think it was when I got to be 24 that I started understanding that this is not right. This mm. is not how I should be treated. You know, I, I now started seeing that, um, you know, I, I wouldn't accept some things. And it was until I was 28, 29, going into my 30s, I started fighting back right. and then it's now escalated from you know um, verbal and all that and then it became physical. Susanne was made a punching bag as Emeki K would beat her up during every misunderstanding even in front of people. It was when her husband beat her mercilessly that she believed that people truly saw stars whenever they were unconscious. I We had gone out with the kids and we came back and um, I was changing my daughter and he saw, you know, her nappy rash and it was a bad nappy rash and it was all over the place, angry and all that, that she'd been molested. And I said, how? This is nappy rash. And he was going on and shouting, who did I give his daughter to this and that? And I should, they need to, be, they need to check her and everything. And I tried to calm him down that this is nappy rash. I use Vaseline instead of powder. That's why it's so red, you know, that kind of thing. And he was going on and on and I was like, okay. And at that point I was getting upset, you know, like you can't be doing this. And then he, he, I was like, okay, give me money. Let me take her to the hospital and let's get her checked. And then he hit me. You know, and at that point, I had like, you know, like, you can't keep beating me up, you know, and I held his hand. And so he just turned me over and hit me. And then he hit me at the back of my neck here. And that was it. I lost sensation to all my body, my body parts. I went down on the floor. I couldn't feel my arms. I couldn't feel anything. And he kept hitting me. He kept hitting me and hitting me and I was shouting, Emeka, if you hit me one more time, I would die. I can't feel anything. I was only seeing the stars. So when he hits me, it goes poof, you know, that kind of thing. And that was only what I was seeing. I could talk, I could hear, I could see, but I couldn't feel. This was in front of our kids. This was in front of his, his PA at that time, Debola. And I was, you know, trying to move my body my body wasn't moving you know so when he realized himself he got up he walked out of the house with years of enduring domestic violence and verbal abuses Suzanne said enough is enough so she took the matter to court along with the picture and video evidence she also had followed with some eyewitnesses from all the evidences she presented before the court the head of court noted that the marriage between the couple had broken down and it was irreconcilable. Consequentially, the marriage was thereby dissolved. His friends did reach out, you understand, but they were not in court. Nobody knelt down in court to beg me. You know, that was a lie. That was a total lie. 
he never knelt down to beg me in court that's a total lie in fact if i may say in court he had actually told me and said who wants you back and i had pointed out to the judge and the judge had said that he heard him you know so it was all a facade you right. know because he just wanted to look good and to stretch the the uh, the court for these proceedings more than it should have been done after the divorce Emeki K was awarded custody of their four children and ordered that the S wife must have unhindered access to them. However, Emeki K took the kids to Abuja, rented an apartment for them, hired the nanny, and then fled to Germany where he got married to a second wife. The wife is going to be working for me. How much you want? She says she wants this amount. I doubled it. So she comes to the house, takes care of the kids, goes back to her house, goes there, work. I'm here in Ghana. She's there taking care of the kids. Yes. That's her job. Mm. She gets paid for her job. Then goes back to her family and shuts us. That's the life we live right now. He wasn't the one taking care of the children directly. I found out that he had, you know, had a home in Germany. He had, you know, he had moved on. He had a wife and, so, you know. So the children were not with him in Germany? No, they've been in, in Abuja. So he left them in Abuja and went and remarried in Germany? Yes. And I found out that my kids would live from uncle to auntie or a loon in, a, in, a, in an apartment that he had gotten. And I didn't like that. How old was the oldest child at this time? Um, he would be 16 or 16, 17. <laughs> Because we were the ones realizing things ourselves. Mm -hmm. I, I, mean, I was in Abuja, I, I was going my, about my day, and then I just realized, wait, though, why am I saying I never saw my father beat my mother? I said, why? I said, where did that come from? My mom was like, oh, you're a child. Said, you can easily manipulate a kid. So mm -hmm. I was just, it was like a dream to me, like, oh, I never had. So when you were with your dad, he began to convince you that the things that you had seen did not happen? Did not happen. They did not happen to me then. That's why she said I hated her. That's true. Yeah. I did. Because yeah. to me, she left. She yeah. didn't want anything to do with me. Mm -hmm. That was the manipulation that was used against me. That my mother doesn't want anything to do with you. My mother has moved on with men. She's doing drugs at your hotel. She's been... I fought with kids everywhere. Went to school, to school, to school, and I kept fighting everyone. I hated what my mother was. Susanna would talk to their children to accept their father, and this made the children to have the impression that one day their mom and dad will reconcile and they would be a happy family again. Actually, the eldest son was planning to make this happen recently until his controversial interview hit the internet. Maybe I can use this opportunity to find peace somewhere. You know, if his family is trying to reason, maybe I can get her to talk with him. And they will have, I was, I was just thinking like there can be something out of it. I was going to call him a day before he came back on Sunday because he did arrive in Nigeria on Sunday. Right, the same Sunday. I was going to call him, but my phone unfortunately got bad. Mm -hmm. and it was just like that's destiny that's God right there mm -hmm. I was like okay he got back and then I saw the video someone actually sent it to me and, have you seen this and I was like no I've not seen it and I was like what is going on and I just watched the video and I was like God this is insane someone I'm trying to form peace with I'm telling his sister things to like get him to understand how things should play out I'm not trying to dictate what should happen in, the, in this incident. I'm trying to tell him that there has to be peace. Mm -hmm. But he didn't want to hear that. He kept saying I was dictating for him. So then I sent him a message that we need to talk. And he was like, all right, we need to talk, it's fine. Then I added that, okay, but I'm not happy about you going online and talking about private affairs. And he just passed out. And I just texted him about that that you have made a mistake. And I have to tell you to ask for the disrespect that you have led on this family, dishonoring our family's name. Like, this just means you have made a big mistake. And he kept going, sending more VNs, more VNs, more VNs. About eight VNs, I sent them to my mom. My mom could not even listen to it. She was trying to calm me down, me down. I'm trying to calm her down. I was so surprised, man. I was like, this can't be, this can't be. Someone I should be proud of.